I grew up in a family where emotions were never discussed or talked about, and so I hid it. I found it was much better to put a happy face on and make people laugh than to talk about it. And I found that drinking was a quicker way to cope with my pain than anything else. So by the time I got to be 16, a lot of things changed. It's okay to laugh at this picture. <laughs> um, who thought this guy would have trouble adjusting to high school, right? <laughs> when I went into my senior year of high school, I went into a horrible state of depression. It started off with loneliness. I didn't say anything. I thought the loneliness would go away. It led to thoughts of death and suicide 24 hours a day, seven days a week for two months, but I didn't say a word. I thought that one day I'd wake up and I'd want to live again. I thought that one day I'd wake up and everything would magically get better. But that day didn't come. And on January 5th of my senior year, I was hospitalized for attempting to take my own life. When I got into that hospital a couple days later and finally figured out what had happened, I realized that I had this massive external life that everybody saw and an internal life that no one knew about. Because I wasn't on anyone's radar. I was present in my class and a varsity basketball player and involved in every student activity possible. When I got out of the hospital after attempting to take my own life, I grew up in a really small town. The reaction was not kind. I lost friends. In school, I was called the crazy kid, the psycho. I had rumors about me all through that town. And two months after I got out of the hospital, a psychologist came into one of my classrooms to talk about the patients he was treating. As he talked about the patients he was treating, every single student in that classroom started laughing. But I wasn't laughing. Because by that point, I had been laughed at too much. And so I grabbed my teacher and I took him into the hallway and I said, this isn't funny to me. And he looked down at me in the most rural Pennsylvania way, and he said, what are you going to do about it? What are you going to do about it? And I had no idea that the answer I was going to give was going to change my life forever. But I looked back up at him, and I said, let me speak. Let me tell people what it's like to go through this. I stood up in that classroom two weeks later, and I spoke for the very first time. And when I finished, no one laughed. And I learned at a young age that if you share your story, it opens people to sharing theirs. Mental health is not something you do when something's wrong. It's not something you do when you have a problem. Mental health is something you build and you foster and you grow much like your physical health. That's the future I see. Today, you heard a lot of stories, including mine. This issue doesn't change unless you tell yours. This issue doesn't change unless we teach people about mental health in new ways, and that is art, and that is music, and history, and neuroscience, and everything coming together to make a difference. There is a massive amount of power in all of your stories. You won't know where it leads until you tell it. Thank you very much.